Customer states there is a burning smell coming from under their vehicle. So, right there is a catalytic converter. This is your DPF. This clogged, so exhaust pressure had nowhere to go but blowing out of the exhaust pressure sensor, which melted and caught everything on fire. Oh yeah, always saving the environment. Government and EPA regulations to the rescue. A lot of people are against deleting diesel trucks. Man, someone asked me if they want to delete their vehicle, I say go for it. It doesn't happen too often, but I mean, if your DPF clogs up and you're still driving and you don't know what's going on, guess what? The heat's got to go somewhere. Customer states, golf cart don't run. Now, mind you, I'm the only one that uh, works on this particular golf cart. And as you can tell, I replaced these batteries back in August of 2014. But well, look here. There ain't a drop of water in none of these battery cells. Look at the corrosion. customer also states that the cart has been sitting for about three years without it running well guess what you gotta keep distilled water in these batteries I'm sure that the uh, battery water got boiled out of it and then, and then the batteries wouldn't come up and charge so they just left it you gotta do your maintenance on these people these batteries are about 200 bucks a piece today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up that's fucked up. I think it's fine. Honestly. She clips came in with a no start. Wonder why it won't start. So why are my brakes sound so shitty? Like, bitch, you ain't got no brakes. Customer states just started making noise. Hey, if you not drive with the Chevy, yeah. and drink in the middle line, yeah. you yeah. no hey. cowboy. Sound like a chicharroni. Fucking day. Dude, the rotor is like, not. it's just like... Oh shit! Fucking just hitting that up. Oh, Robert. <laughs> hey, unable to duplicate. <laughs> working at you ought to working as design. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that?
customer states he thinks his truck needs a transmission and the transfer case. All right, let's go take a look at this thing. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh Jesus fucking Christ. The fuck do people do with these things? Holy shit. So Bill, what do you want to do today? Oh, I don't know, Bob. Let's take this F-550 and run it off a cliff. Then let's take it to the Ford dealership. Okay, customer states that when you push on the brake pedal really hard, it sounds like there is a child screaming under the dash. I'm not lying. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh. Check that out. Okay guys, quick explanation of what's going on here. This has what's known as vacuum boost, brake assist, and when you push in the pedal, it pushes in that plunger. But if we have a leak, hear that slight hissing sound? Let me push really hard, let's see if I can do it. There we go. We start leaking vacuum and it causes that squealing sound. And it also hinders brake performance. Customer says this vehicle has a wobble while driving. I'm not even doing 25 miles an hour. That's the wheel. Doing that on its own. I'm gonna try and let go. What the fuck is wrong with this thing? I've never been so scared to do over 30 miles an hour in my entire life, and yeah, he drove it here. Let's go find out what the fuck's going on. All right, shake that motherfucker. Shake it the other way. Yeah, we don't need that hub bearing. The right side sway bar bushing is on the left side. And there's the bracket. Just install new calipers, but we uh, missed this. Oh man, the longer I look at this thing, the worse it gets. His cab corners aren't rusted out. That's cool. Customer states, just purchased a used vehicle and will not start unless you turn the air conditioner on. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hey. Where is your RPMs? Let's turn the AC on. Oh. Hmm. Let's turn the AC off. Oh. Oh, you know, your used car you just bought, it might be a hybrid. Yeah, we're gonna rule that out as normal operation. The vehicle uh, is a hybrid, and when there's no load required, we're not gonna run the engine. But, Sometimes these little used car shops don't tell the customer what they're purchasing. They just see it out on the lot, it's shiny, they like it. Oh, take your money, see you. Customer states, brakes just started making noise. Well, customer states, truck won't start, just clicks. Well, we had it towed in and the customer has already put a new battery on here and uh, I've been doing my checks and making sure I've got uh, you know everything's good and tight and everything's tight but check it out guys I can't make this shit up those caps are supposed to come off the battery post before you put the cable on Well, I tell you what, this is some Jerry Rig stuff here. But I'm gonna put it back like he had it. He may have some kind of spray. Customer state after filter replacement, the car is sluggish.
customer states, just switch my summer tires for my studded winter tires. Don't do anything else. You know, don't do anything else. You crooked mechanics, you. Presented to you by that customer that has a guy. Customer states he's going to Mexico at six o'clock tonight. It's two thirty, and uh... this dude just said, "Did you fill his washer fluid?" <laughs> <laughs> Just oil caked up everywhere, all over this damn thing. But you know what? He's going to go to Mexico. So in celebration of him getting an oil change so he can make it to Mexico, he is Mexico bound, baby. What's this shit need? Uh, driver rear hub, rear main seal, oil pan gasket, and four tires. <laughs> going to Mexico. Mexico bound, baby. Going to Mexico. I think we have some kind of electrical failure at that sensor. Customer states that that did not happen until Devin over here yeah, did a coolant flush. What do you think? Mind you, this has been happening ever since the coolant flush and we did that coolant flush a year ago. Customer states noise when turning left, like whistling. I swear to God, girls just wake up in the morning and get in their car and just like, start driving. Like, they don't check nothing, bro. Like, I just got in my sister's car because mine's getting serviced. And I go and look at her dashboard and I'm like, check engine light just chilling. Just on. Just like. Customer states, we need to computer balance four tires on this rig. Do this. First, we get our laptop and our scan tool. Then, we hook this in to the wheel. Next. We open it up, wait for it to fire up, and we're gonna start the balance wheel procedure. I don't have time to wait for my computer to load. That's gonna take a little while, but that's how you computer balance wheels and tires in a nutshell. Customer states, golf cart doesn't run. Got fuel. Guys, I can't make this up. If you turn the fuel off, you're not gonna, it's not gonna run. Customer states thinks transmission needs to be replaced, maybe transfer case. Well, fuck, bud. You might need to. Holy fuck. On today's episode of customer states the customer states that when you turn up the fan speed we don't get much out of the vents oh let's see what's we have shit falling out oh what do we have in here oh my god oh my god oh yeah that would be why you don't have any air blowing out your vents Oh my god, it never ends! It's way up in there! Alright, well now I gotta pull the blower out and clean it out too. Mm -mm. It's that my uh, engine's knocking. There's the oil pan. Some jelly. Oh yeah. Damn, that's the fucking oil? That's the oil. 
customer states engine has a very loud knocking sound let's have a listen Customer states that his vehicle died after leaving his LED lights on. Customer attempted to jump the vehicle and had the jumper cables hooked up backwards. Started to see smoke. Inspect and advise. Ouch. On a brand new Ranger. That sucks, dude. You know, I kind of feel bad for the guy because a lot of people make that mistake. It does run. I mean, we are running, but we have we have some service messages. Lots of service messages. So, we'll have to take it inside and see if anything got damaged, burn up, maybe just some blown fuses, if he's lucky. And I will update you guys. Customer states, ABS light on after installing own level kit at home. Well, I wonder why. On a 2020 F-250. Lovely. Customer stated he felt a knock on the highway and his car doesn't turn on anymore. Yeah, I think I see the problem here. Car came in for a transmission leak. Oh. Okay, we got a car in here. Customer states making a weird noise. Ah! Guys, I can't do this today. I can't do this today. Customer states, he just needs some air in his tire. I can't, guys, I can't do this today. I can't do this today, guys. We got a 2016 Mitsubishi Outlander. Customer states, that they bumped a curb and might need an alignment. They might need an alignment and maybe replace some parts. Sorry. Stupid anyways. <laughs> what was it, customer stays clunking in the front? <laughs> clunking in the front end. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh yeah, got the transmission line. How's it driving? Dude, it barely drives. Well yeah, there's no fluid in it. <laughs> That angle is well, yeah, I mean, that's pointing up, and that bracket is bent up in. That whole front end's twisted. That's what he was doing, though. In the mud, spinning the tires, the front tires hit pavement, and bam! Snap the drive shaft. Broke transmission lines. Torque the front end. Dude just bought this truck. Let his son take it out and drive it. Outstanding. You pump me up. You people pump me up. Man, own the truck for one week that is all CP. Like, you don't have a choice but to fix that. That sucks. Everybody drop a comment. How much is that going to cost? Customer states, they don't want an inspection. Well. Well, I think there's a problem here. Yeah, that's a problem. Customer states, brakes just started grinding a week ago. I think it's a little bit more than a week ago. A little bit. Customer states. Vehicle went into the ditch, was pulled out, drove fine, now has warning lights and no power. Customer then tells us vehicle was up to the steering wheel in water. Drain the fuel. And there's not much fuel, it's mostly water. Today's customer states we have a Ford Edge that apparently hit a rock and now has an oil leak. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Maybe you hit a boulder. Let's drain the oil pan spark plug. Okay. 
this thing's on there. All right, here we go. Oh, coolant. Nice. <laughs> hey, it works, right? I mean, come on. But that's all dirty and mixed with water. Customer says it's got a water leak. You. Yep. You. She was full of water. Customer states, we have a noise coming from under the vehicle at slower speeds. Damn it, Bobby, you done fucked up. You broke your truck. Still. Yeah. Where's your boot? It's gone. Devin, get this guy the shaft. Now, something to keep in mind, this truck has been altered with a lift kit and the angles are all wrong. I mean, you can see where the shaft is right on the edge of that joint and that's just not gonna work. Fortunately, this is one of the downfalls of having a lifted truck. Customer come in stating his exhaust was too loud. What the fuck? Customer states a bear was stuck in her trunk. Customer states, car won't start. Let's find out why. Pop the hood. And ooh, cotton candy. Mmm. I think we're gonna start with a battery. So the customer states there's a bad smell coming from the engine. I think I found the smell. Customer wants their brake pads changed for noise. Couldn't be the anti rattle clip. Pads are good. And there's a new pad. Back at it. So customer states. Won't go in here. <laughs> so, customer states, weird noise from motor. Yeah. I would say so. Customer states that they have a leaking tire and they can hear hissing. I'm betting that hiss sounded like a neutered cat. Customer states that the uh, tire rides kind of crappy, so that could do it, probably. Or that. The lights aren't that big of a deal, but uh, yeah, this one's a weird one. The customer says their headlight's not working. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, no, it's working, but what the fuck? All right, we'll get that fixed right up for you. Customer say, leaking brake fluid from rear. Customer states power steering leak. Slow motion is awesome. On 
today's episode of My Car's Making a Weird Noise. Yep, I think we found it. Customer states, just paint my truck blue. I don't have a particular color in mind. Pick one. Well, here's why you can't do that. Because this particular chipbook has 18 pages of blue variants. The other chipbook has 17 pages of blue variants. The little key ring they carry around with blue variants has about 13 different colors. So I'm getting the 55 Ford ready for its blue patina paint job. And no matter what color I pick, it'll probably be wrong. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Customer states My sunshade is hanging down Actually it's not The customer did a really nice job of fixing this sunshade I don't think I can do it any better I'd almost say that that's a permanent fix. Customer states has an exhaust leak. Recently had vehicle at an exhaust shop a year ago. Well, I guess I'll go further down the line. I don't see any problems there. Oh, hey, they forgot to put one of those really nice welds right there. Customer just wants me to get his exhaust pipe away from his uh, differential. There we go. I love being able to help people. Customer states. Driver's controls for passenger windows do not work. Okay. I've already fixed it. But the two rears don't. But if we go back here, they do work. They need to be initialized. You have to do it from the actual switch. Hold down for a few seconds. Hold all the way up for a few seconds. And now this window will work from the driver's seat. Somebody put a battery in it, I'm sure. The oil pressure light is on. Has been like this for about a couple months. As you can see at idle, it says low oil pressure. We give it a little bit of gas. Hey, we got oil pressure. Now sometimes this could be just something simple, like an oil pressure sensor. But it could also be your engine is destroyed. You should probably stop driving. That wouldn't be as much fun. Oil pressure is important. Like, imagine if your heart stopped beating and you lost blood pressure. You should probably go to the doctor. With the exception you wouldn't be able to. You'd be dead. Your car's engine kind of works the same way. Actually, that's a terrible comparison. Because there's no way that you would still be able to live for a couple months after you lost blood pressure. Totally disregard that. Fuck sakes. I am a terrible mechanic. Don't ever let me work on your car. So I haven't done customer states in a while because I haven't had anything good come in a while because it's been slow. So I don't just make that stuff up. I actually wait for some good shit to come in. So I'm just going to give you what I got. On today's episode of Customer States, Customer States, his check engine light is on. Customer States, their red brake warning light is on the dash and their brake pedal gets really hard. Verified that I have vacuum to the booster. But I have a good feeling that we're losing vacuum out of the booster somewhere. Let's check that. Using the scan tool to monitor vacuum at the brake booster while putting my foot on the brake, I lose vacuum very rapidly, causing the hard pedal and then the light to come on. I'm going to use a smoke machine to check for any leaks. Now we wait. Oh, you see the smoke? I push on the brake pedal. And the inside of the cab really starts to fill up with smoke because we have a vacuum leak coming from our brake booster into the cabin. Okay, so this is a customer's 1994 2500 Chevrolet truck. But here's where it gets weird. 
six lug. It is a six lug 2500 Silverado. It was made in Canada. How it got here or why it's here or who ordered it, I don't know. But it's actually got a 305 engine in it. So it's incredibly underpowered. 270,000 miles. Comes equipped with Baina sausages. Four wheel drive floor mats with dead frogs under it and saw blades. It is a Cheyenne. I guess that means it's a female. It is four wheel drive. And the owner likes beef. As you can tell. Customer states, we have a noise coming from under the vehicle at slower speeds. Damn it, Bobby, you done fucked up. You broke your truck. Hell. Yeah. Where's your boot? It's gone. Devin, get this guy the shaft. Now, something to keep in mind, this truck has been altered with a lift kit and the angles are all wrong. I mean, you can see where the shaft is right on the edge of that joint and that's just not gonna work. Unfortunately, this is one of the downfalls of having a lifted truck. Customer states their driver's window isn't up and they've already replaced the motor themselves. Got some handiwork here. It's up, they did get it up, but uh, they got it covered, I guess, just in case. Let's check it out. Well, we got our test lamp hooked up to the motor. That's up. That's down. So we got good power and ground. This is a late 90s F-150. If you've ever dealt with one of these, the window mechanism in the motor is actually pop riveted in. Um, I'm not sure if he's done something to bind this motor and regulator up or if he just has a bad motor. So I got to get it apart and see what's going on. But before that, I got to give get customer approval. Uh, he may actually want to dive back into it himself. So I'll keep you guys posted. And upon further inspection, well, that certainly doesn't look like a new motor. I'm thinking we may have went to the junkyard and gotten a fault. You're gonna love this one, guys. Interesting. Customer funny. states, I hit a porcupine. Yep. And you fucked up your tires. And most of your underbody is porcupined up. Um, those little critters are destructive. This tire looks like it didn't get too damaged. Anything else cool under here that got porcupined? You're gonna have to replace that tire. Look at those. Don't fuck with a porcupine, even with a car. No. Nope. Look, they're even jammed in the bumper. This thing's like armor piercing. Customer states that the vehicle overheats and has an oil leak. Okay, start it up, pop the hood, and I see this. Well, that's not good. How did you get here? <laughs> Customer states, brakes just started making noise. Customer states, my sunshade is hanging down. Actually, it's not. The customer did a really nice job of fixing this sunshade. I don't think I can do it any better. I'd almost say that that's a permanent fix. Customer states noise when braking. Well, oh, I wonder why. Well, that explains it. Now we just gotta wait to hear a, what do you mean you can't turn my rotor? I think I'm in a Ford. There's only one way to be absolutely 100% sure. It 
Yep, it's a Ford. Welcome to another episode of Customer States. This is going to be part two. Today we're looking at a 2006 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 liter. Vehicle inspection, job notes, customer states. The steering is funny, check engine light is on. So let's go take a look. So now we'll go ahead and fire it up. And looks like we got a check engine light on. And he also states the steering is funny, so let's see what this is about. <laughs> Customer states, the vehicle will not start, has no oil, please advise. Yeah. Gotta say that's a first. This is one of our rentals and the guy who manages our rentals said that there was a vibration from the blower motor after they washed it. It got water in the fan somehow and it all froze up. So I figured out the cause. I'm pulling another dash. This is the circulate door that is supposed to shut when the key is turned off. It's all supposed to be shut right now, but it's not. Cabin filter sits right below that. It's soaking wet. Circulate and doors wide open. Not that you can see it. Awesome. Well, y'all are gonna love this one. Customer states, launched golf cart off flight of stairs and now won't steer. Here's the steering rack. And holy crap, here is the the, the rack boot and here is the, uh, the steering arm. This is supposed to be straight like this. It broke the ball joint as you can see there and the uh, actual steering arm is bent and it's rubbing the wheel and just look at the lack of maintenance you got me a morning guys customer states truck won't turn It's time to get the fuck home! Up you get! How do you fuck a man then? Come on, the fuck! Hey guys, today we got another episode of Customer States. This is gonna be part four of the series. Vehicle application is a 2003 Chevy Silverado. It's a 5.3 four-wheel drive with the 4L60E. Now, the customer states. My buddy told me my transmission is toasted. And I was like, well, I'll be the judge of that. So let's go ahead and get this thing torn apart. We're going to take the pan off first. Oh, come on! Customer brought in their 98 F-150 today. Uh, claims their back brakes lock completely up and slide whenever you press the brakes. So we're going to go take it apart and see what it needs. Well, we've got the side taken apart that is locking up. Nothing really out of the ordinary here that I can tell other than the pads are really old, or the shoes that is. Um, 
There's some cracking. Drums not overly grooved. They're not adjusted out too far. I don't know. We're going to see what the other side looks like. All right, we've got the other side off. I had to persuade this side a little bit. Uh, and it's really, really hard to tell, but the pads or shoes are worn unevenly. One end is thicker than the other. Something is definitely... And we are back, but only temporarily. We'll get into that later. I got a 2016 Exploder and a very smudged lens. That's better. And the customer states that the vehicle will start without the key. There's the key. Yep, it sure does. Now the customer is adamant. Completely 100% sure that all keys are accounted for. Huh, what's that? Huh, it won't start now. This is why mechanics will always double check what the customer tells us. And that's probably gonna cost them 125 bucks. Customer states, vehicle shuts off when making right-hand turns. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. See what happens if you don't like check fluids on your vehicles? Then if you go into water, it turns into this good old fashioned rotten milkshake looking shit. And then it just fucks everything up. It's awesome. Customer came in for an alignment on a 73 Mach 1. We told them that it needed front end parts, the pitman arm. He tells us that he already replaced the gearbox. No sir, pitman arm. Yeah, the gearbox. Please send help. Customer states, they hear a whistling noise upon heavy acceleration on their EcoBoost F-150. Get straightened up here. I can hear that. People mistake this sound from coming from the turbochargers. Let me show you where this noise is actually coming from. Might be a little hard to see. But there's our culprit. Broken exhaust manifold bolt. Back pressure builds up between the engine and the turbo under acceleration. It will sound like a tea kettle when that pressure skates or it's leaking. I always replace the manifold, all the studs, all the nuts, seals and gaskets around the turbo. And that's usually the fix. If we sell this repair, expect the follow up video. Customer states to hear a loud noise and feel a vibration, mainly when turning. So the noise ended up being a right front hub bearing. Uh, they are going to get that replaced next week. Once I get that out, maybe I can show it to you guys. And it might even be kind of crunchy when you spin it in your hand. And as bad as it sounded, hopefully the wheel doesn't fall off before then. 20, no, 2008 Ford Edge. Customer seats. It keeps overheating. Check engine light is on. Huh? Hey Ty, I wonder why this keeps overheating. There's no fucking cooling in it. That's after pouring one entire gallon in. Not leaking. But it is a Ford Edge, so... Yep, I think I found it. Nope, false alarm, just had to wipe my stick. Ew. Uh... Never fails. Anyways, it needs a water pump. 
15 hours to fix it. <laughs> so, customer states, they have a vibration. Let's check out why. Hmm. Maybe if you stop driving by Braille, you wouldn't have a vibration. Customer states, heard popping in front of truck. Well, let's just go see what he's talking about. All right. Nah, it's fine. No. Yeah, it's fine. Our states, we're having issues with the blower motor. We're running into the problem where none of the speeds work except for the last two. Basically, how cars adjust the blower speed when you change the settings is through a blower motor resistor. The higher the resistance, the slower the fan blows. That was typically a low setting would have higher resistance, whereas the highest setting is full power to the blower, no resistance at all. That's why it blows harder. This right here is our old one. See how it's burnt right there? Our newly designed blower resistor with actual resistors like this one. This one should hold up a lot better. Let's install it and see what happens. 90% of the time, your blower resistor will be mounted up underneath the dashboard where your blower goes. As you can see, I actually had to take the blower out to access this resistor. Okay, let's test it out. One, two, three, four, and boom, we got all speed. If you have a 3.5 EcoBoost that rattles at first startup, this is probably your issue. VCTs on every vehicle. You just brake and then it moves independently. Dude, Jeff, what's taking you so long, man? I identify as an hourly test. Customer states, no power at the shop edition. Have an ABS light on, ran a scan on it, and we have codes set for both front wheel speed sensors being erratic. And that's because the reluctor wheel on the axle shaft is cracked. Oh, there it is. See that? That right there will cause an erratic signal. Plus it allows the ring to move around on the shaft. In this situation, these reluctor rings are not serviced separately, so we do have to replace the half shaft. On this one here, you can see our reluctor ring, and you can see that there is a, a break right here, and it can just slide around. Is the sensor that reads those teeth as they go by. So customer states, cars making it started making a noise. Let's see if we can get this here. Let's see if we can get on this. What is that? 178, 798. All right. What's this old sticker up here say? 170, 774. You've went 12,000 miles on an oil change. I bet it does make some noise. We'll find out. Yeah. I don't do these very often. Customer states that all the damn lights are on. All of them. This is my roommate Subaru. While he was recently on a road trip, the check engine light kicked on, which caused all of his fancy features to kick off. I told him to go to just a random parts place and have them scan the code and tell me what it was. He didn't bother telling me what it was until he got back. They told him it was just the gas cap, but they didn't clear. Pretty sure they have policy against clearing those things. Either way, here I am. I've got the Snap-on Triton scan tool here, so let's check if they were right. 
This thing automatically figured out we got a Subaru Crosstrek 2018 with a 2 liter. And let's do a code scan. Detecting. And sure enough, the only thing we really have in here is a gross vacuum leak, P0435. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear that code out, and he should be good to go. He already tightened the gas cap. Clear all codes. Turn the car back on and confirm the fix. And so much better. This is definitely a time where I'll say older cars are so much simpler. Why did the gross vacuum leak cause the lane assist and all that to turn off? Why? I don't get it. Customer states, my windows are melting. Well, okay. I get it. They kind of look like they're melting. I'm thinking this might be a good job for a glass shop. Maybe that looks like a weird tint or something that's clear and doing some funny stuff. It's a Volvo. And technically, the door panel's melting too. Customer states, vehicle is overheating. Yep. Customer states, there's a grinding noise when braking. Please check and advise. Hmm, let's see. Huh. Uh-oh, there's your problem. Yeah, just started. Bullshit. Well, that rotor about gone. Oh, and then on top of that, shocks are blown out. Major high-low spots. Know how to ride the brake much? Excessive heat. Excessive warping. Hmm. I guess brakes just magically change themselves. We don't have to worry about them no more, huh? Well, I mean, I'll admit, they do have decent pad. But God, take care of your vehicles, people. There's just nothing quite like working on a truck that has been on the road for 300 miles and you have all these fancy new parts. No rusts, no garbage, no nothing. Just sweet, sexy. Parts installed. Customer states, driver's door does not shut. I fucking wonder why. Customer states, he's got a random misfire. There's his coil. There's his plug. That's the fucking pro. Hey, good morning. Happy hump day. Today's victim on customer states. We have a 2014 Versa Note. Customer states, gas pedal got stuck and I drove through my garage door. Customer states. Hear a scrubbing noise from front end. Yeah, I bet you fucking do. Ain't no damn brake pad there. Happy Monday, and welcome to today's episode of Customer States. Customer States, once in a while, this car is hard to start. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's cute. No fuse on it. Batteries the wrong size, and... Yep. I mean, at least just put the tie down on so the battery's not. Fuck it. I give up. Customer stated I installed my own parts. That doesn't look right. Yeah, I don't think that's how that's supposed to look. What do we have going on here? Hmm. That helps you to break better. A little loop in it. Well, boys! I fucking sent her a little too fucking hard, bud. I really hope I- Oh, fuck! 
All right, customer states, vehicle bucks when turning in four wheel drive, it goes away in two wheel drive. I can't, not not today guys, I, I can't. Okay, so we're in two wheel drive. Looks good. Let's go to four wheel drive. Customer says, it didn't do that before you fixed my four-wheel drive. Uh, come on, are, are we doing this today? Come on. Got a nice little Toyota here. Customer states, I'm hearing a little noise when I'm driving down the street. Oh, you don't say, just a little bit of noise. How about that? Always good. Customer states, film behind radio screen. 8600. 8, Let's see. It looks fine. It's just the background, man. It's just, it's like the background on your smartphone. It's just like that. It's the theme. Look at. <laughs> customer states after he replaced his own wheel bearing there was a vibration coming from the front of the vehicle well bud yeah you replaced your wheel bearing but did you uh, remember to tighten the wheel what makes this even better is he drove over an hour to get to the shop and the wheel fell off literally as he was turning into the parking lot I'm not even going to begin to tell you how funny this is, but we're working on this Honda and we're rebuilding the head and <laughs> we're just coming down to actually get the timing cover off and um, we were like, what in the hell is that? Just chilling, right? Well, turns out they use that to plug their oil and this whole time we had no idea. Oh my God, dude. I mean, if you don't have an oil plug, I mean, <laughs> it works, right? That better use that crush gasket though. Make sure that thing seals. <laughs> Funny question would be, what happens if you put some spark on that, huh? Maybe you get some uh, internal nice combustion. internal combustion in that. Yeah. Why are my brakes sound so shitty? Like, bitch, you ain't got no brakes. I don't know, but I've been told. But coming into work's getting pretty fucking old. Customer states, flat repair. Just fix the tire at any cost. I think you got bigger problems happening here. Well, boys, I fucking sent her a little too fucking hard, bud. I really hope I, oh, fuck, bud. Damn, I hope my radiator's good. I've had to go tell Alexis. Customer states that both left side tires appear to be losing air. Low tire, huh, bud? You think? Extend the car all the way out and dolly back. What I like to do is set the dollies up on the narrowest setting on the flat side and stick a ramp there and then pull the car in. It is gonna roll right up. Parking brake on so she doesn't try to roll out. And there you go, we're ready to rock and roll up on dollies with a flat tire. There ain't much to it, no need to bust out the jack or anything crazy like that, and you can see it's off the ground. Getting it down is the exact opposite. Just suck the car all the way in, set the dollies down, and extend. And it should roll right out for you. And there you go, that's how you tow an all-wheel drive car that's got a flat tire with dollies. Customer states, a vehicle makes loud grinding noise from the rear end. Well, no shit, Sherlock.
done spit a piston out. episode of how fucked up is fucked up that's fucked up and that's fucked up and um fucks up today's episode of how fucked up is fucked Water, up that's fucked up and that's fucked Ew. up Nasty. and um fucks up anybody chocolate man look look spence finger licking game <laughs> Today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. Yeah. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. And um fucks up. On today's episode of How Fucked Up is Fucked Up. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, no, hell. Where the smoke rings at? I wonder if she ain't working. I wonder if she ain't got no clue. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. And um fucked up. What do we think happened here? Do you think a rat or a mouse or a squirrel did all this damage to this car? Oh no, oh no. Well, that's not in one piece anymore. On today's episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. That's fucked up. On today's episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. That's full of water. That's covered in water. That's full of water. That's fucked up. That's real fucked up. Holy Jesus. What is that? Fiberglass. What the fuck is that? What is that, Private Pot? I'm not quite sure what went on with the uh, fan clutch here, but it's frozen solid. And it's made a little contact with the hood here. And, uh, Done fucked up. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. 
And, um, fucked up. That's fixable. 100%. You know, that's just... Oh yeah. 100%. Fixable. On today's episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. Customer states, truck won't start. So, check the starter cable. Hmm, that could be a problem. So let's dip down here and hook it up. Hmm, that could be a bigger problem. Customer brings in their 2004 Tahoe this morning, uh, claims the defrost is blowing, but nothing's happening, it's not working. Let's go find out why. Defrost is on. And that is why it's not working. See this? This is what happens when drifty drift becomes fucky fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I can only guess what happened here. Two wheels in the fucking curb. There's a slight vibration as the wheel wobbles at five miles an hour in a whole car. So this customer needs brakes. Low pad life, not to mention the cracking. Wanna know what they said? No, oh, I don't wanna stop, I just wanna drive into a bridge. On today's episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. And I'm fucked up. Hey. On today's episode of How Fucked Up Is Fucked Up. That's fucked up. And that's fucked up. And I'm fucked up. Customer concern today. Customer states, vehicle will not start. Had to make sure the bastard had gas in it, and I forgot before it was up on the damn lift. But let's check out what the problem is. Oh shit, that's a problem. Gonna be doing some wire repair today. Today we have a 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe. Customer states they hit some railroad tracks and might need an alignment. And a wheel, and a tire, and control arm. Sorry bud, it's gonna be a little bit more than a hundred bucks. Sorry. Stealing this from another TikToker I love to watch. Uh, I'm for Subaru, not for Ford or GM, I think he is. Uh, Aaron does Uber. Customer states. Customer states had independent shop install new motor. Car no longer runs. Independent shop managed to fry every single ground point in the car. So it needs a new bulkhead harness, a new body harness, and a new engine harness. So this has been my fun. Yay. Second DN. Uh oh.
<laughs> All fixed. Customer states. Wipers will come on randomly. Radio will change stations when vehicles on or off. And a bunch of other random things. It says that the engine is louder since the last oil change. Their seatbelt light it is very sensitive. First with the radio. If your radio looks like this and it's a touch screen, I will tell you right now, it will register your thumbprint. That is right there. It will change. With the seat, if it weighs more than five pounds, truthfully three pounds, it's gonna kick on the seatbelt light. Don't put stuff in your passenger seat. And just, why do you come in and your vehicle smells like a damn ashtray? Like, come on, this thing's brand new and it already looks like this. It's got 16,000 miles and it already looks like this. What the fuck?